Donald Trump is convicted before anyone on Epstein's client list. Huh, okay. We have politicians that go into office worth about $2, and now they're millionaires. Yet he's the one being funny with money? Huh, okay. You charge him for allegedly paying people to hush when you have others who literally have unexplained bodies dropping around them. Huh, okay. Some of you have been nothing but quiet until now, afraid to speak out, but somehow believe posting a flag upside down is gonna turn this whole thing around. Huh, okay. I think most of us can agree what's going on is not okay. And no one is coming to save the day. If it wasn't gonna be before, unless they do something drastic, it's Trump 2024 for show. Sure. Love that guy. Trump 2024 for show. Sure. Oh, hey, we got a great show for you tonight. It's Chris Hyland. This is Courageous Media. So glad you joined us. We're still talking about the one story in America that actually matters. And that is the false conviction of Donald Trump in a scam kangaroo court trial on ridiculous charges. Hey, but it's backfiring. Man, the boomerang has started, it's ongoing, and it continues to happen. Today, we're going to check in with some great patriots like this man right here. Speaker Johnson had some comments on his show when he visited Fox News from Ohio. We're going to check those out, and we're going to finish up with another great patriot. Let's go. Hey, before we start, if you could please like, subscribe, let us know how we're doing in the comments. It is my great honor to bring you this show. It's my great honor to, to be able to do my little part to help Donald J. Trump and to help fix this country, to help us resurrect our republic, which died on Friday with this absurd, unconstitutional ruling. So let's drive right in. Let's go. Uh, let's bring in House Speaker Mike Johnson. He joins us right now with reaction. Uh, Mr. Speaker, good morning to you. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Uh, we were just talking about how uh, ever since the verdict, uh, a lot of money has been coming into the Trump uh, campaign, and I was just reading in Punchbowl that the National Republican Congressional Committee, you guys raised three hundred thousand dollars last night, which eclipses only the day you were elected speaker, and you raised one hundred seventy-five thousand. So obviously, uh, you know, angry voters are motivated voters. They are, and there's good reason to be motivated. Of course, I mean, this entire thing is absurd. I'm a lawyer. I was a litigator for 20 years. I was in court with President Trump a few weeks ago to see this for myself. What happened there was outrageous. And you're right. The American people see it. This is a purely political exercise, not a legal one. And everybody knows that. They know intuitively that it's wrong and the people are outraged. I'm in one of those swing states today. I'm in Ohio and Michigan today. I'll, I'll be in Illinois tomorrow. I'll, I've been in, by the end of this week, I'll, we'll have been in 115 cities in 29 states. And I'm telling you guys, something is happening out there. People see what is going on. They see that the Democrats are so desperate because President Trump is crushing Joe Biden in the polls. They see the Democrat party and the left so desperate to stop him that they'll risk the destruction of our entire legal system to do it. And that is not hyperbole. That's what's going on here. We broke records on our on our fundraising platforms last night. We'll continue to do that. We even set up a new website. Go to supportbjt.com because that's how us in Congress, members in Congress, are going to help stand with him and defend this and make sure the right verdict is uh, rendered November 5th. So that's the American people's verdict. He's absolutely right. The boomerang has started and it is in full force. They raised over $300,000 for the Republican National Committee and for the Republican Congressional Committee, which guess what? Congress isn't very popular. The fact that they raised that much money in a day for the Congressional Committee is unreal. They also talked about Donald J. Trump. DJT has raised more than $200 million since this scam conviction. That is unreal. It's been, what, 72 hours? Not even that. $200 million. It is amazing to see what's happening. There's a question that several podcasters, one in particular, has always asked, and that is, is it bad enough yet? Is it bad enough yet for a major shift in American voting patterns? And I believe, because up until now, it's gotten bad. It's gotten bad with crime. It's gotten bad with illegal migrants. It's gotten bad with inflation. It's gotten bad with us shipping money overseas. It's gotten bad with wars in the Middle East, wars in Ukraine, uh, tensions of war brewing in the South China Sea with Taiwan and China. Because of this ridiculous garbage person of a president, Joe Bryden. But up until this conviction, I'm not sure it was bad enough yet. I think this conviction is the straw that broke the camel's back. I think it's bad enough. 
I think people look at this conviction and realize, oh my gosh, if they can do this to a former president, they can do this to anybody. And this comes on the heels, really, remember, and some of you didn't see this story, we're going to do a whole video on it, on the ATF literally executing a law-abiding man in his own home. Did you hear about that one in Little Rock, Arkansas? Yeah, we're going to do a whole video on that, but look it up. The ATF executed a no-knock search warrant, not an arrest, not an arrest warrant, a search warrant. And they issued a no-knock search warrant on a man who is not a violent criminal, has never been arrested, has never been sideways with the law. But because the ATF determined that he didn't fill out a couple forms properly, they busted down his door and executed him, shot him in the head in front of his wife. People have looked at that story. They've looked at what's happened to Dexter, I believe it's Dexter Taylor in New York, got 10 years for a totally legal hobby. And now they look at DJT and they realize justice system has been weaponized against not just President Trump, but against American citizens. And I think American citizens are not only scared to death of that, but they see right through this scam conviction and they know what's going on. They know what time of day it is. So, Mr. Speaker, if I could get you to put your legal hat back on, uh, not as speaker, but what? How, how does this play out? I mean, you got the former president. He, he's going to appeal this. It, do you yeah. think that this is going to happen before the election? Most analysts say it's not. Do you think that the Supreme Court has a duty to step in since this will impact um, you know, the election? I know we want to act like he's just a normal guy, but he's a leading presidential candidate. The voters should know what's going to happen here. So what do you see playing out in the legal system? Well, there's a lot of developments yet to come, but I, I do think, I, I do believe the Supreme Court should step in. Obviously, this is totally unprecedented, and it's dangerous to our system. I mean, we've all discussed this before, and you all talk about it all the time. This is diminishing the American people's faith in our system of justice itself. And to maintain a republic, you have to have that. People have to believe that justice is fair, that there's equal justice under law. They don't see that right now. And I, I think that the justices on the court, I know many of them personally, I think they're deeply concerned about that as we are. So I think they'll set this straight, but it's going to take a while. You're right. The process takes a while to play out. The Democrats know that, of course, and they're dragging it out. That was the whole objective. They want to try to bankrupt Donald Trump. They want to diminish his credibility mm -hmm. and, and go after his character. They wanted to keep him off the campaign trail, which they were successful in doing for many weeks. And now they want to call him the convicted felon. It, this will be overturned, guys. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it. It's just going to take some time to do it. Right. Uh, go ahead. He's absolutely right there. I believe it, it will be overturned. They will eventually find a court, an, appeal, an appellate court with three sane people on it. Now, realize that he cannot appeal in the state of New York until June 30th, or I believe it might even be later. It might even be after. He might have to wait till after sentencing. It's either June 30th or it's after actual sentencing that he has to wait to appeal to the New York appellate court and then eventually to the New York Supreme Court. However, Jonathan Turley was on Fox and he had a great breakdown of the things that Donald, the Trump team can do right now to bypass basically or parallel appellate with in, inside the federal system where they can appeal directly to the federal system based on violations of the Constitution and Donald Trump's First Amendment and Sixth Amendment rights, as well as because of some other factors that they can ask for an expedited appeal through the federal system directly to the Supreme Court. And I hope that the Trump team goes every single one of those avenues. As soon as they can appeal in New York, they need to appeal in New York. But prior to that, they need to leapfrog this into the federal system and get an expedited review by the Supreme Court itself, because this trial was an abomination and this verdict was an abomination. Let's keep going. It, thanks, Brian. In the meantime, the sentencing date is July 11th. That's after the first debate. So the two candidates will debate. Then there's going to be the sentencing date. How's that going to affect the RNC? What if he has home confinement? He can't go? Does the convention still happen? Does he Make no mistake. They set the sentencing date specifically for that purpose. They set it right before the RNC. That was on purpose. This whole entire trial is election interference. It's a gigantic scam. He zoom in on the screen. How does he campaign? If he goes uh, to, to prison, what does that look like? Will he be in prison with Secret Service on Election Day? 
we're in uncharted waters, right? Obviously, there's no prohibition against him uh, being elected president, uh, even if he's confined somewhere. Right. But I certainly hope that doesn't happen. I, you know, there's lots of discussion. We talked about it all last night. We'll, there'll be more discussion today about how we might adjust things and the schedule and all of that. But I'm going to tell you what's, what will happen. I predict this will increase turnout on our side. He will win decisively. He will become the next president. He was already, as I said, crushing Joe Biden in the polls. I think as this plays out and people get more and more frustrated about it, I think it will help us. And that huge enthusiasm gap that already existed between the Trump and Biden campaigns will be even wider. People now see Donald Trump as a symbol of something. He right. is, he's more than just a, a, an individual. He's a symbol of fighting back against this government corruption, the deep state, the bureaucracy and all the rest. And we need his leadership in the White House now more than ever. I mean, just seeing for the last five, six weeks, everything just stopped. Uh, everyone's watching. It becomes the number one story in big and small towns across the country, you wonder, the other three cases, the other three indictments, will they see the light of day? No one can say for sure, but we expect at any time the Supreme Court to rule on immunity. You have such a rich legal background. What, are the, what, what should we all be looking for there? I know what you're hoping for. What are some of the rulings they could have? Well, look, I, I do believe that the court needs to address that uh, clearly. We have to set a standard here. There's a, a really important principle of immunity for a commander in chief. I mean, that, that's always been part of our legal tradition and, and it makes good sense. You can't have somebody sitting in the Oval Office worried about some rogue prosecutor somewhere, some Soros funded DA or some lawyer that's gonna come after them for their decisions. And so that principle needs to be uh, made concrete and needs to be expanded. I think this court will do the right thing because they see the abuse of the system right now. And that's the greatest peril here of all at the end of the day. This right. transcends even Donald Trump. It's about it's about whether or not the people believe in our institutions, our system of justice. There's nothing larger than that in our in our system. Right. And we it looks very much like the Supreme Court is going to weigh in on the immunity issue, probably a little bit down the middle. They are certainly not buying the the Biden's the Biden administration, the Biden regime's arguments that there is no immunity. And but I don't also think that they're buying some of the Trump team arguments that basically immunity is virtually unlimited. I think they're going to they're going to shave it a little bit down the middle. But it's very interesting because they've got other precedents that they can factor into their decision. For example, Obama never went after George W. Bush for the torture during the whole Gulf War situation. And that would be wide open if there's no immunity. No, Trump didn't go after Obama for his drone strikes that killed four American citizens without due. So they were deprived of life without due process. And that would open up Obama, certainly for those situations. So I think this, the Supreme Court's going to weigh down the middle on that one. And Speaker Johnson was absolutely right. This transcends Donald Trump because it's about destroying. They, they have shredded the Constitution and our justice system in order to try to get Donald Trump. But in so doing, they have made Donald Trump a martyr. Because now when a lot of independents look, they no they longer see Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. The Biden regime has managed to take the focus off of Donald Trump and all of his great policies and many of his personal flaws that people don't like, the mean tweets. But they have created a whole new narrative, and that is Donald Trump versus the corrupt system. And they have given people an absolute looking glass right into the corrupt system. So now you're seeing lots of independents flocking to Donald Trump because it's not about Trump anymore. Most of these independents will tell you in TikToks and in posts, I don't even like Donald Trump, but I'm voting for him. I'm donating to him because this is bigger than Donald Trump. Johnson had that one absolutely correct. Uh, we're talking to Mark Penn, the very famous pollster a little while ago, uh, Mr. Speaker, about how this is gonna boomerang on the Democrats. But nonetheless, even though it looks like it's going to boomerang and come back to haunt them, uh, you know, every day, every minute they can, the campaign is going to refer to him as Donald Trump convicted felon right until, right up until, uh, you know, the, it's overturned on appeal if it is. Yeah, and they'll still say that after the appeal, I'm sure. That's what was the whole objective of this thing. But I'm telling you that the people see right through it. I've been all across the country, north, south, east, west. Doesn't matter whether I'm in a blue state or a red state. 
people are disgusted by this. They right. see exactly what's happening. Old charges, a, a tainted judge. I mean, think of it. In the last couple of weeks, they've been apoplectic. They want uh, Justice Alito to be recused from you know yeah. future cases yeah. and proceedings because his wife flew a flag at their house. This judge on this case in Manhattan was an open Biden supporter, an yeah. open you know activist, a political activist, and no one cared about that. So Mr. the double Speaker. standard is clear. Everybody sees it. We, uh, I was watching Alina last night, one of the attorneys for Donald Trump, and she said when the judge, when the verdict was read, he had to put his hand over his mouth, and she said she suspects it's to hide a smile. Mm. What's mm. your reaction? I, I wouldn't doubt it. I, look, I told you I was there on the ground. I saw that uh, that Banana Republic uh, trial going on. These are the things that you expect in third world countries, not in the United States. That and, should never yeah. happen. That judge should never have presided. So Andrew yeah. Weissman, who ran the Mueller probe, said he has a man crush on the judge. And he thinks that he also recommends that the president get prison because of his uh, really violations and the way he talked about the judge. They're just Your un thoughts? Unreal. It's, it's incredible. The gag order, all of it was, uh, I, in my view, an unconstitutional uh, restriction <laughs> on his free speech. I mean, he's the nominee, the, the, the Republican nominee, one of the major political parties in the country, running for president. You cannot do to him what they did, it, it shouldn't have been allowed. Uh, none of this should have gone forward, and I think the people see that. They see right through it. Can I ask this one is... more question? Sorry, go you go ahead. No, no, I've asked two all none of this should have been allowed. The gag order, the fact that he couldn't call witnesses, this is all a violation of Donald Trump's civil rights under the Bill of Rights of the Constitution, which is why they need to go direct to the Supreme Court for an appeal. Right. Oh, no, go ahead. I just want to know from a faith perspective, Speaker Johnson, um, what can you tell our country who's disappointed in, in this ruling and worried about the future? Look, I was with some big crowds uh, here in, in four different, three different cities yesterday in Ohio, and, and I told them all the same thing. Keep the faith. Look, I, I'm absolutely convinced. Reagan used to remind us, we are the last best hope of man on the earth. He was quoting Lincoln in that regard. We have the best system, and even though people try to corrupt it, it is worth preserving. And I, mm. I genuinely believe, right. uh, Ainsley, that God's going to allow us another chance. We're going to be able to fix this. November 5th cannot get here soon enough, but I'm very bullish on that election cycle. He's absolutely right. But there are things that we need to do, Christian American citizens. Courageous Army, for those of you who are believers, there are things that we need to do. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. Our number one hope in the next five months is for every Christian in America to get on their knees and start repenting of the things they've done personally in their life, where they have fallen short, and for us to call America to repentance over these wholesale slaughter of babies inside the womb, all of the LGBTQ nonsense that they are shoving down children's throats. Hey, if you're an adult, you want to go do some things, that's fine. But the fact that they are shoving this down children's throat is an abomination. There are things that we can do from a faith perspective before we ever get to November 5th. And then as citizens, the thing that we need to do is we need to, our three-prong strategy, donate, volunteer, and talk to everybody you know. Donate, drag other people with you to donate. Volunteer, drag other people you know with you to volunteer. And then when November 5th hits, you go vote, you vote early. We're not Democrats, so we can't vote often. However, you go vote early and you drag 10 people there with you. Cousins, aunts, uncles, friends, acquaintances. That's how we're going to win this thing. And we're going to finish this up with one more citizen because Mike Johnson was absolutely correct. People see through this crap. They see through this nonsense. Here's somebody else who sees through it. Hey, the statute of limitation was over. There's so many things, so many reasons. Oh my gosh. Okay. But thank, thank God he's going like appeal, appeal, appeal thousand percent this is election interference the exact same thing they did before they're just spinning it a different way if you don't see it you're blind thank you so much for the hearts or thank you so much for the roses appreciate it appreciate it they are scared to death of trump tracy you are a thousand percent right because he's going to expose their corruption they want and he is going to take their power 
Trump don't play games, okay? Trump does not mess around. He's gonna take their power away. Hey, Dean, welcome in. I'm on my lunch break, Dean, and I just had to hop on. I literally got, I have an hour lunch, and I'm like, let me just, I just ate, let me hop on and say hi to everybody, because I am just, they are so pathetic. They are in panic mode, they are desperate. Thank you guys for those gifts. I see you, I see you, and I appreciate it. Make sure you're following me, you guys. Go check out my freaking content. I just posted a video about everything that was wrong with this case everything that they did wrong. Alvin Braggs, he ran, okay? He ran his campaign saying, I'm going to get Trump from day one. That's what he said. Didn't have a, didn't have any, anything against him. Just same with him, her and Letitia James. They both ran on their, they ran their campaign saying, we're going to get Trump. We're going to find the conviction. So that right there, they literally said it before they even ran, before they were even in office, before any of this crap came out. Why didn't they bring up this in the last election? This happened in 2016. Why did they wait to bring it up now? Why is that? You, you need, we need to start thinking about these things. Start asking yourself those questions. Absolutely right. Why didn't they bring it seven years ago? Why did they bring it when even uh, the FEC, the DOJ and Bragg Twinkies the first time said there's no case here? No, they brought it because Donald Trump announced he was running and Donald Trump clearly started to win. He started to win people back to his cause. He started to build a whole new Trump coalition. That's why this thing is an abomination. It stinks to high heaven. It will get it uh, overturned on appeal, but that's not going to happen probably before the RNC. Now is our time. Patriots like this who see right through the scam. Patriots like the gentleman right at the beginning of this video, see right through the scam. I trust you, Courageous Army, see through this whole nonsense. Now it's time to go to work. We got to get on our knees and pray. Those of us who are believers and as citizens, we need to go to work, donate, volunteer, speak and vote. Let's do it. We got a country to save five months to do it. Hey, I believe God is sovereign and he is good. He's allowing us to go through this for a reason, but it'll all be good in the end. Hey, if it's not yet good, it's not yet the end till I catch you next time.